QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Customer Jobs. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the home page to the gray area, noting in the view drop down, we've got the hide icon bar and open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. We're not gonna be opening up the reports this time because we're looking at simply adding jobs to do that, we're going to go to the customer center, which can be done by clicking here or by going to the customer drop down. This is how I typically do it. And the customer center up top. We've got the customers on the left hand side, noting that the customers are the ones that are hopefully going to be paying us at the end of the revenue cycle, the start of the cycle happening when we create an invoice or a sales receipt charging the customers in some way, shape, or form for goods and services that have been provided. We can add the customers by adding multiple customers as we did at the beginning of the practice problem, one at a time, or as we enter the sales items, such as the invoices and the sales receipts, we might be adding the customers as we go there as well. Now we wanna consider this concept of jobs. Now a job, as the name would indicate, would typically be used when we have a job cost type of system. So you can imagine a situation, for example, this is usually a situation when we're not selling like fixed unit items or our services are not are, are really uh, standardized type of services. They're not varied, meaning if I sell the things, if I sell inventory or I do services that are all exactly the same and aren't long lived in terms of how long it takes to fulfill the service, then we probably don't need jobs because we're just going to be charging the customers with an invoice or a sales receipt as we go. However, if we're doing more individualized work, we're providing inventory or we're doing services that is different, distinct, custom to a particular uh, client, then, and also we might be doing work that's gonna last a longer frame of time. So if we're doing the work for them, I'm not, I'm not just giving them inventory done, we're done doing business, that's it. It might be that we're creating something for them, which could last even a year or multiple years into the future. So that causes some problems with the revenue recognition principle of accounting, because normally we recognize revenue when we do the work. If we have these longer jobs, then you might be looking at different revenue recognition kind of principles. When should we recognize revenue along the process of the job? Should it be when the job is complete, completed contract, or some kind of percentage of completion kind of thing, and you get in these different estimations. Those are specialty areas and they come into play with specially in, uh, special industries, specialty industries for accounting. And that would be something like construction often has those longer uh, jobs and you might uh, hone down on those if that's a place where you want to specialize. Also, you have similar kind of job cost uh, necessities for service companies like law firms, bookkeeping firms and whatnot because again, they could be longer jobs. You might not be actually making something. So it might be a little bit easier in that case, but you still have this, this longer job and estimates that might be involved uh, with it. Uh, so you might have situations as well. So you got one client here, which you might have multiple jobs for, which are gonna be customized jobs and be jobs possibly that will take a longer amount of time that you wanna track separately than from the single customer. So those are some scenarios. Uh, so we're gonna we'll set one up for Jones Guitars. So the easiest way to set up a job is we're just gonna have Jones Guitars. And then I'm just gonna put a job number under Jones Guitars here. So I'm gonna go to 
Jones Guitars is selected. I'm gonna to go to the drop down for new customers and job. We're gonna add a job and I'm just gonna make it as easy as possible. I'm just gonna call the job name 4002, a number. We might want to add more detail for the job and so on in the job name. But notice most of the rest of this item is populated uh, from Jones because it's a job related to Jones. So I'm gonna keep most of this other stuff the same as Jones Guitars for the contact information and so on and so forth, unless there was some difference uh, for it. We got the payment settings is gonna be you know similar to pulling over from Jones Guitars, additional information, and then the job information. We might have a job description, the job type. We could add different basically job types in the job uh, in, our, in our lists and have different options in the drop down, And then job status, the common status if you're looking at longer term jobs in like a construction company or possibly a law firm or something like that might be a pending job. Uh, the job has been awarded, meaning you've kind of given the job, but you haven't started working on it. And then the classic three components, once a job is, is, has been accepted, would be in progress, closed, and uh, or not awarded. So in progress and closed would be you know the, the major components once you're actually working on the job so the the process would be possibly you have an estimate someone comes in and asks you about a job you create an estimate for the job and once they maybe they accept the job then the job is in progress you start working on the job and and adding costs and whatnot and it might take some time and then of course at some point the job will be closed you have finished the job and so on start date projected end date uh and end date we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on the job cost system here i'm just going to say okay but we will uh, record some transactions to the job using a timesheet we have a whole another courses i believe multiple courses on on job cost systems if you want to dive into that in a bit more detail again it's a specialty area if you're a bookkeeper you really want to start thinking where do you want to be specializing do you want to specialize in companies that have inventory? Do you want to specialize in companies that don't have inventory, like very like invent companies that you could streamline, possibly using a cached system, possibly a system where you can use the bank feeds quite easily to record much of the transactions? Do you want to specialize in a more complex area that has more complex accounting needs, such as a job cost system, construction companies possibly that have to deal with estimates and tracking the job system, which again could be a good area because it's a specialty uh, area and so on. So notice that if I created like an invoice now, then I can apply the invoice to that particular job. So I'm going to say 4002. It's going to be applied to that particular job. It's still Jones Guitars, but it's going to that particular job. We also have some, I'm, going to, I'm not going to record that. You also have some specific reports. If I go to the reports drop down and we go to the, to the uh, job, let's go to just the financial reports. You've got the profit and loss by job, for example. Class tracking could also be used when you get into more complex accounting for job cost systems and so on. You could use class tracking uh, in some cases as well. Note, if you're in like a bookkeeping system or something like that, you might have, and you have like an accounting firm or a law firm, you might be tracking the time, for example, and applying the time that has been done to a specific job when you invoice the client. So you might, for example, classically, a CPA firm or law firms will have a staff that's gonna be working for the partners and they'll be entering their time, billing the time or entering billable time, applying that time to a job in some way. And then we will invoice the clients periodically based on the work that has been done based on you know the jobs. That's another kind of system where a job cost system would be uh, common oftentimes. So let's go back on over. Notice that the job is indented here under the name and in the format of it. Let's do another one just for practice. We'll go to Jones, that one was for Jones. Let's go to Sam the Guitar Man. I'm gonna select Sam the Guitar Man. I'm gonna go to the customer job up top, customer and job, add a job. And I'm just going to call it a job number, which is going to be 4002. Is that what I labeled the last one? I think it is. So I'm going to say, okay, so now I've got two. Let's change this one, this one for Jones. I'm going to right click and, and edit. Let's edit it here. Edit that one. Let's make this one. This one should be 
3005. Let's make that one 3005. So that matches my, my worksheet over here. <laughs> so that looks good. So now we got 3005 and 4002. That's how you can set up the jobs. And we'll do a little bit of applying to the jobs. I think in our practice problem, if we go to the home page, we'll talk about entering time, for example, that might be applied to a particular job. But again, the job cost system uh, is, is a system that is a specialty area. We've got whole uh, courses where you, could, uh, where you can dive into that specialty area in more detail.